Tonight on Newswatch, students on campus are lobbying the university to take going green and sustainability more seriously. Find out what they are doing on campus to get their point across. For the second time in as many weeks, Iowa State students have lost one of their own. And it's that time of year, no, not time for big holidays, but a big change in scenery. See what exactly makes all of those lovely leaves outside change colors. You're watching Newswatch 18. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mary Buenaventura. And I'm Josh Larson. Students gathered to Monday, marched and protested Iowa State University's use of coal in its power plant, questioning how the use of coal fits in with the Live Green initiative. Chris Quarieri and David Durong take a closer look at the protesters' efforts. That's first tonight on Newswatch 18. Across campus, a group of students spent the day outside Parks Library protesting the existence of Columbus Day. Simultaneously, Iowa State groups activists, Greenpeace, the Sierra Club, and the 350 organization marched protesting the tangible use of coal at the Iowa State power plant. Marching with picket signs and chanting anti-coal and clean energy messages, the groups made their way from the coal plant on the east side of campus to the steps of Beardshire Hall. All the groups are sustainability-based, with the 350 organization leading the way with protests across the country. The groups promoted Beyond Coal as their message and made their way to the Iowa State Main Administration Building on, I on Central Campus. Students got up in front of the group discussing their views and definitions of sustainability. The demonstration provided an opportunity for groups to be heard and send their message out to campus. Sierra Club Iowa coordinator Graham Jordanson was pleased with the demonstration. Um, it went great. We, we did this last year and we had a, cu a couple less than we had this year, so that means our campaign's growing. You know, it's been two years since we started it, and to have some of these new people out here joining activists, joining the Sierra Student Coalition, um, they've they've got they're really great. It's it went awesome. The groups were hoping administration members would talk to the protesters about their message, but Iowa State's higher ups didn't make their way out. Anna Waddick, president of the activists, was understanding, but still marched to let her group's message be heard. It's frustrating, um, but we did contact them a while ago, and I understand there are scheduling conflicts. I know they're very busy. Hopefully they're busy working on some stuff that we would like to see done on campus. I don't know. You always hope that they'll show, but... The protest march also provided the groups with an opportunity to get their message out to the media and hopefully impact Iowa State's campus and the city of Ames with true sustainability and green living. For I State News, we're David Durong and Chris Cuellar. Now, even though campus administration did not show up at the press conference, Active Us says that they will continue their efforts to further discuss the university's use of coal. For the second time this week, Iowa State students have lost one of their own. Iowa State student Samuel Kruger, a sophomore in civil engineering, died Friday, October 8th of injuries sustained in a crash on Highway 59. Lucas Lodemeyer was driving the oncoming semi-truck and after attempting to swerve out of the way, overturned his vehicle in the ditch. Iowa State Patrol said both were wearing their seatbelt when the accident happened. The memorial service for Kruger was held this morning at Tabernacle Baptist Church in George. This is the second death this week as Jonathan Brown was struck by a car after the Iowa State-Texas Tech game. Now, trees on campus are beginning to change color as weather begins to get colder. Well, as you know, woody plants, uh, specifically trees, uh, change their, their leaf colors this time of the year. And a lot of that leaf color change is due to genetics and also due to the environmental conditions that are presented during, during the season. So for example, ash trees, green ash in particular, always turn yellow, whereas white ash tend to have per shades of purple and red and, and, uh, and yellow. And so a lot of the colors are genetically programmed into the tree. So why do the leaves show their colors only during the fall? Well, Isle says the chlorophyll in the leaves depletes during the fall and colored pigment in the foliage shows itself. The Iowa Department of Transportation will accelerate installing barriers along the interstate including I-80 in Jasper County where deadly crashes have taken place. In August seven people were killed and six others were injured in two head-on collisions. The Commission added 90 miles of barriers along interstates 35, 80, and 380 costing 5.8 million dollars. The cars driving on the safer stretch of road will be sporting the same license plate design for now. Iowa transportation officials said yesterday that they're not considering new license plates for the state. An update from last week's vehicle services director who said that new plate designs would be produced in Iowa prisons. 
Currently, there are no plans to change the more than 12-year-old blue and white license plate designs. Well, Tyler, it's great to have you back in the studio. Oh, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. It, it was, it was kind of weird today seeing the sun and all of a sudden a sudden downpour. What was going on? I know. I, I tell you what, you know, we had a sudden downpour day, the first rainfall in about a couple weeks, which is actually pretty ironic. And now conditions are back to normal already. Unbelievable, you know. Just this crazy October continues. So I take a look at Day Planner to actually follow up with that. Tonight, of course, that rain has already moved through. We're going to see some clouds coming overnight. The wind is going to pick up out of the northwest 10 to 15 miles an hour. And we're going to see a return to fall like temperatures as temperatures return to an autumn like average as we see highs tomorrow in about the mid 60s. Still a beautiful day. Sunshine will be out. But are we going to see any rain chances in the forecast? I will give you all the details after this. You are watching Newswatch 18. Watch. We are back. We're going to take a look at your forecast for summer. Why, why is the clicker not working? Let's, we're going to have our residential side size eyes analyst, Nick Crawl, go ahead and continue to loop this through now. Thank you so much. Here we are with Iowa weather. Let's take, take a look at the beautiful weather outside, starting with this cold front that has passed through actually about an hour or two ago. That's what brought those thunderstorms you saw if you happen to be walking around campus, got caught in a brief downpour. It wasn't very exciting because it was the first rainfall we saw in about a couple of weeks, and it was about a quarter inch of rain, so it was you know, pretty measurable for that time. High pressure is going to move in. There's a pretty strong one actually out to the uh, west right now, actually bringing about some freeze warnings to North Dakota, South Dakota, and as well as western Nebraska. And a tropical storm is down in the Gulf right now. Going to hit the Yucatan Pe Peninsula. Her category 2 hurricane actually, so pretty strong. Take a look at conditions out there right now though. Mostly cloudy, 73 out there, dew point 57. So there is some moisture returning to the air as those thunderstorms did pass through a little bit ago. Northwest, northwest winds out of 20 miles an hour. So pretty strong out there still. And we'll continue even tomorrow as you will notice if you're walking around campus. Temps out there right now. As you see down here in the south, temperature is about 79. Front hasn't really hit there yet, but over here, it's low 70s up in the northwest portion of Iowa. And let's take a look at the rest of the state as we zoom out and look. Here you can see where the fronts moved through, 69 over in Sioux City, but over in portions of eastern Iowa, 78 down at Tumwa, 79 over in Cedar Rapids. So they have yet to see that cold front push through, and they will later this afternoon. And we take a look at lows this morning. Not too bad out there, mid 50s, uh, 47 over in Sioux City, and even eastern Iowa saw some mid 40s as well. So a pretty nice start to the morning. No freezing temperatures to be reported just yet. High temperatures today, nice 82 down in Des Moines. Moines, out, out in western Iowa, low 70s though, so not, it's okay for them out there, but still above average actually. Like I said, temperatures are about 65 degrees right now at this time of year for average temps. Out there right now, you can see it's a little bit cooler out in the Midwest, out in like Denver, uh, Rapid City, as you see low 50s to 60s. That's where that intense high pressure system is, bringing about those cooler temps, but out to the west, it is beautiful. St. Louis down there, 79 and 72 over in Chicago. Very nice weather for them as well. Take a look at National Next Ride Radar. Not a whole lot going on though, but as you see, there's that cold front that brought those thunderstorms through earlier to Ames, and there's a low pressure system sitting down in Mississippi right now, bringing a severe thunderstorm watch to them and some rainfall associated with that, but pretty much very beautiful skies across the entire portions of the United States for everybody else. So as we take a look and zoom out for forecast temps tonight, it's going to get down to about the upper 30s tonight, actually. And as that kind of just passed through there, it's going to be about mid-60s for most of the state tomorrow as we see a return to fall. But for tonight, mostly cloudy. Winds out of the northwest, 5 to 10 miles an hour, gusting up to 20 at times with a low of about 39. So a little bit chillier than what we've been seeing. And as we head into tomorrow, it will be breezy northwest winds, still 10 to 15, but gusting to 25 and a high of 66. So right around average for this time of year. But it'll be a beautiful day once again. And as we take a look at the extended forecast, Things are going to warm up by the weekend, though, as you notice, about mid-70s or so. And once again, not a raindrop in sight. We're going to continue to see a gorgeous October continue along. But until then, we're going to send it back to the desk with Josh. Thanks for that, Tyler. We have an update for you here about a fire this morning. No one was injured in a fire at a fourplex on Clark Avenue this morning that resulted in the significant damage to the structure. Ames Fire Chief Clint Peterson says the cause of the fire at 911 Clark Avenue is still being investigated, but that it began in the first floor rear apartment. A woman and two children were in the building at the time, but all three made it out of the house safely. Officials say part of the reason for the extensive damage is the home in the home is older and it lacked built-in fire stops, which allowed, fire, which allowed flames to move up through the walls from the bottom, bottom apartment into the second floor and finally to the attic. Authorities say a teen died Monday night after being taken to a hospital by friends early Saturday from a house party in Harlan. Police said 17-year-old Julio Sarsis was driven by other teens to Murchu Medical Center in Harlan around 1 a.m. Hospital officials said the he was unresponsive when he arrived and was later taken to Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha. 
where he died 48 hours later. Sarsis just joined the Harlan High School weeks ago, and staff said he was a great student and athlete. The case remains under investigation. Coming up after the break, Aaron Bauer joins us with Newswatch Sports. Stay tuned, you're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back, I'm Aaron Bauer with Newswatch Sports. The Iowa State volleyball team looks to get back on the winning track this week. The Cyclones are coming off a difficult loss to unranked Kansas last Saturday. Next on the schedule for the Cyclones will be a home match with Kansas State. The Wildcats are coming off a loss to Texas Saturday. Iowa State swept Kansas State in both meetings last season. First serve is scheduled for 7 p.m. at Ames High School and will be televised live on Metro Sports out of Kansas City. Also, the first 200 Iowa State students through the door Wednesday will receive a free Subway sandwich. The Iowa State women's basketball team leader received some preseason recognition today. Cyclone senior Kelsey Bolte was named a preseason All-Big 12 Conference. Bolte is the first Cyclone to receive this honor since Lindsey Metters back in the 2006-2007 season. Bolte averaged just over 12 points per ball game last season and is currently 19th all-time in Iowa State scoring history with 1,082 points. Bolte will lead the Cyclones into regular season action Saturday, November 13th as they host Western Illinois. The schedule for the Cyclone football team does not get any easier this week. Iowa State is coming off a 68-27 defeat to number 11 Utah. This Saturday, Iowa State will travel down to Norman, Oklahoma to do battle with the number 6 Sooners. In Saturday's contest, Iowa State can be without starting running back Alexander Robinson, who suffered an injury in the Utah game. Once again, the key this week will be for the Cyclone defense to slow down the Oklahoma passing attack. The Sooners come into the game averaging nearly 300 passing yards per ball, per ball game. And the last time the Cyclones and Sooners matched up was back in 2007 when Oklahoma defeated Iowa State 17-7. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 p.m. in Norman, and the game will be televised live on Fox Sports Net. Finally, in other NCAA football news, the first BCS projections came out, and Boise State sits at number one. Defending champion Alabama lost to South Carolina last weekend and dropped all the way down to number 10 in the rankings. Top five teams include Boise State, Oregon, TCU, Oklahoma, and Nebraska, respectively. The official BCS poll will be released sometime next week. Well, thanks, Aaron. And there's one thing I probably can't complain about with all these football games. It's been the weather, and, and yeah. I just hope it keeps continuing like this. No, we're definitely going to see a return to fall, and even that's going to feel nice. I mean, the football game has passed Saturday night if you were there. I mean, it was amazing. It was a gorgeous night. And finally, we're going to see continued nice weather. No more rain, actually. After today, that was it. We're done. So another October with no with no rain thus far it's after this week. Yeah, so great thank hear. goodness. Yeah, everybody's enjoying the weather, especially yeah. the farmers. They're loving yeah. the weather. So absolutely. But everybody else is too, especially for sports fans. Definitely. Uh, okay, but, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Tyler. And that's it for uh, tonight for News Watch. Tune in again on on Thursday night for more news, weather, and sports. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.